Okay, uh, we're close to the holidays. I don't know how much bigger of a crew we're gonna have. So I think we should go ahead and get started. Um, okay, this is issue 689 on the PM repo. Here you go. Uh, we'll talk about some lingering spec items, which I think are very near just clicking the merge button. Um, DevNet three updates. I'm not sure who's going to give us the update, but someone can step up. Uh, George is going to give us a quick on the large block spam test. Um, quickly revisit the pre-compiled benchmarking, and then if there's anything to hit on the readiness checklist as we move into the new year. Okay, so we had discussed this many times um, on how to handle unavailable data outside of the prune window. Um, there is a PR up 3169 that will be merged today, which I believe reflects uh, the general consensus on this, uh, both on this call and on the consensus layer call. Um, if anyone has any final comments, please say so now or jump into the issue really in the next hour or so because it's time. Anything on this one? Okay, great. The other one also is kind of a last call in that um, how to handle this edge case where um, in certain contexts, you might not be able to get a sidecar, whether that's past the prune window or outside of um, you know the 4844 fork depth or whatever it may be. Um, and the general agreement here was to have a particular error code uh, for the resource not being available. And then you can try on the non- unified beacon block and blob sidecar um you know this was by coupling this was a known um edge case that we're going to, have to work through and there's a pr 3154 with this um this is also in the state where it's going to be merged very very soon today so if are there any comments on this or um otherwise if you don't have them here jump in really in the next hour or two any comment Sorry, what was the PR number again? This is 3154. I'm going to drop it right here. Okay, thanks. Yep. Great. Okay, and then um, I did open up an issue that I shared, um, I wish I had noticed this earlier, but just where we're doing this data availability check in the spec um, is a bit strange with how the spec's been designed thus far. It kind of brings, it's like hidden and should be cached input to the state transition function or hidden, or hidden's maybe not the right word, but um, an additional input to the state transition function other than uh, the block and even a data availability sampling it would be kind of like this weird dynamic call to uh, the network. Um, how things have been designed, it's more appropriate to go and kind of fork choice and be a blocker on uh, getting the tree in place. From a from an engineering standpoint, you know things are done probably in various different places and. Uh, results are cached. For example, you know, you do you do parts of the state transition function when you're checking gossip, like the proposer signature, you probably cache that. Um, then you go into your fork choice. So like the actual like implication on engineering, I think is pretty low here. It's more on getting the spec in a slightly more standard place and where this would be tested in the spec. Um, I believe on everyone that works on the spec uh, regularly, uh, there's general agreement here. Um, seems like Mikhail kind of agrees here too. And uh, but I, I I'll leave this up for discussion. I'm happy to take questions or discuss right here. Um, so any input, but I just want to kind of draw your attention to this. That I likely this is going to be shifted around a little bit.
Okay, please take a look at this if uh, you are curious or want to weigh in. This is 3170 on the consensus specs repo. Are there any other spec updates or spec discussions? Um, any any pressing items on consensus specs, uh, the EIP, or engine API? Um, so I'd be interested in talking a little about um, an idea Yasik brought up, um, which was rather than gossiping blobs, like could we possibly gossip just blocks and then directly request blobs via RPC once we see the block? So you can, there's a bit of a chicken and egg problem here. Um, if you're only, um, doing the requests on the rpc then at initial like it, it it's much you don't necessarily have like the blobs well seated in the network and you end up kind of just hammering exactly who just sent you the block um to get what you just asked for there are like mixed strategies on gossip networks where you kind of you you and and we have this in gossip sub kind of implicitly where you you push to some and you announce to others. Um, so you know it might make sense to find a more explicit hybrid strategy here where your the push announce ratio is maybe different. Um, but I think that what you end up with, if you have purely uh, only announce on that, is that you end up with just like a, a much slower and stunted gossip. And if those blocks are getting far ahead of where the um, sidecars are, you know, you'd be asking people that don't even have what you want and then be searching around for it. So does that make sense in that you, like you kind of need some amount of push to get the network seated here? Yeah, like the way I would think it would have to work is you wouldn't be able to propagate blocks until you had a blob and then you would always ask whoever just gave you the block for their blob but i could definitely see that being really slow but on the other hand like not oh, having this... sorry what well... please uh i was gonna say on the other hand like not gossiping blobs would reduce the bandwidth concerns and then it also generally structurally looks more like what it sounds like full data availability sampling might look like. So I thought it was an interesting idea. So I guess generally what we're trying to do here is potentially increase the rounds of communication, but reduce or eliminate the amplification factor because so I I know, at least if you're honest, if you've given me the block that you do have the blobs and I can ask for them. Now if three other people give me the block because of the amplification factor, I don't ask for them. So then I I kind of take some round trip hit, communication hit on each step to eliminate the, the gossip amplification. Is that is that kind of the strategy here? Um, yeah, I mean, that sounds like it could work. I, I don't really know. I just thought this like, uh line of thinking was something that was interesting to explore, I guess. I'm, I get, it sounds like it's been explored to some extent, but. I mean, this is already in part of the spec, right? That we're not supposed to announce the blobs. It's not implemented in DevNet, but it's part of the specification as far as I recall. Uh, right now we, right. we send like the blocks with the blobs together. So it's like, I guess announce along with blocks. Oh, so this might just be just for the um, transaction gossiping then, rather than the block block gossiping. Yes, yes, uh, there was a, a a trade off on that one, and that but <clears throat> transaction gossip is arguably less timely, and so the kind of like uh, announcement and the round trip is more okay, um, at least. Can be handled i think with a little bit less care than than with the block here um i guess sean the other <clears throat> i think i think that could work 
Um, I think it complicates our gossip rules a little bit, although I think we can kind of shove it in there. Um, I think it it's going to make each hop take longer, but it's going to reduce greatly, reduce the amplification factor on gossip. I think the other thing to consider here is the uh, EpiSub, because EpiSub attempts to try to reduce the amplification factor of all gossip, but in a more kind of generic way. Um, but I'm certainly yeah. willing to kind of like put this on the table as we discuss things in January. It might be worth very worthwhile. Yeah, I'd be interested in like, I don't know, testing it out, experimenting a little bit. Has he or you or anyone opened up an issue? I know this was in more of like a DM chat. No, I don't think so. Okay. I can open one after the call. Yeah, that'd be good. Thank you. Um, any other initial thoughts on that? Not from me. Very cool. Let's take it to an issue um, and discuss. I think certainly there are probably a few different uh, strategies to, to reduce the bandwidth here. That would be one, episode would be one, um, erasure encoding would be another. Uh, but we can, let's let's keep that conversation going in, in January. Thank you. Uh, any other spec items? Great. Um, DevNet three updates. I am not, I've not been following this, so I, and I'm not sure who on this call has the info, but if you do, please speak up. Yeah. Um, I guess I can structure this by requesting updates from, um, people that have been working on the various clients. Sounds good. Um, I, I can start with, um, prism, um, Terrence already posted like his update on the uh, on the implementers call PM, um, but basically Prism is pretty much um, up to date with the DevNet. Um, there are like a couple issues, like what um, Terrence highlighted, blocks by blobs by root isn't quite implemented, but I don't think I think that's something we can, um, I guess, update eventually, and it's not necessarily for the DevNet to get it operational because it's it like covers one edge case for the DevNet. Um, but yeah, Prism is ready. And um, Roberto, how is um, the, um, I think Aragon you were working on? How is that going? Yeah, it's, it's um, I've made considerable progress. Uh, it's not ready yet though. Um, maybe by the end of the week, <clears throat> I'm hitting some pieces of code out. Um, uh, that are quite different than Geth, that's so to, to set me back a little bit. Okay. And uh, speaking of Geth, <clears throat> Geth is also um, pretty much implemented. Um, and um, is Alexi or Frilly Curly in the call? Maybe we can get, get us an update on the, um, Nethermind. Uh, yeah, uh, we aligned our implementation with uh, the latest Geth and Prism changes, and looks like it uh, it's working. Uh, there are some known issues, um, but well, not very critical. It uh, uh, it still be able uh, to be run in the network. Awesome, and uh, Sean for Lighthouse. Yeah, I'm still sorting through a couple of sync bugs, but I think I identified the problem as of this morning. So I'm going to try to fix that and test it today. Um, but other than that, we should be there. Excellent. Um, any other client does on the call want to share the updates? Hi, Lord Star. Uh, so we have been successfully able to interrupt with get and as well as generating a transaction uh, and sort of including it in the block. Uh, mostly we are ready for the interrupt. 
Excellent. With the and uh, things why I, uh, I think I'm here representing Ethereum JS as well since Andrew is not here. For Ethereum JS as well, we have made a considerable progress, and we are also able to interrupt for Ethereum JS with load start. And uh, I think Ethereum JS uh, would also be able to join the interrupt. Great, that's good news. Um, any other client devs? Yeah, here, Taiko. Um, we are progressing on, on the uh, storage of, for Blob sidecars, and we are progressing on the networking for the RPC methods. So um, currently, what is uh, still missing as important is the sync logic so uh, but everything is is kind of progressing and we expect to be able to join some test nets by hopefully by the end of january to be ready for 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 the meeting cool thank you for the update um, I think that covers all the client devs. Um, so some some extra news about the DevNet. Um, we actually do have a tentative, and I'm very particular with the word tentative here, um, because we only have one client combination working, um, which is Geth and Prism. We have a DevNet deployed, adhering to DevNet v3 spec. Um, with those two nodes. I would like to add more clients, including particularly Nethermind, Lighthouse, since they're the closest, and I guess, um, Lodestar um, into the DevNet so that we can get more, like we can be able to test the deep behaviors of like client interop. Um, I'll post the details of the DevNet configuration and parameters on the uh, EIP4844 testing channel. But um, yeah, hoping to see get some more contributions here in the DevNet. Is the DevNet already running? Yes, it is. Okay, so maybe we can try think up the DevNet locally, and, and that would be a good idea. Yep. Thank you. Nice. Are you sending blob transactions on this DevNet? Yes, I am. And uh, yeah, there's like a hack and be user guide similar in the style of DevNet v1, whereby you can interact uh, with the DevNet. We have a bunch of public endpoints exposed, so developers can start building some tooling similar to the previous DevNet on top of this one. But yeah, it all works out. Fantastic, great work. I have a quick question. Um, I'm looking at this DevNet 3 doc and look at the milestones and then at M3. Uh, how do the, the EL plus CL interrupt test vectors work? I, I apologize, I'm not familiar with this. This is your repo, Mopi. So I guess yeah. I'm asking you. Okay, so that. Um... Basically, we, we have um, a suite of tests. Um, it's similar, it's styled like Hive tests, but they're more succinct. Um, for every client implementation, we add that to that repo and um, execute those tests. And if they're passing, then um, I guess they're good, at least for the most part. We've already gotten some contributions to um, get those tests passing for various clients, but we've been running into a couple of issues um, integrating the clients with the interop repo. Um, gotcha. Yeah. The hard problems. <laughs> um, do just for my edification are any, so like are Geth and Prism passing M3? Um, Geth and Prism, is not passing all of it. There's one particular test in Prism um, that is not passing, which is historical sync. Um, oh, okay. 
I suspect the issue is mostly on the client side. It's more of a technical issue than a consensus critical issue, which is why, but for all purposes, um, Prism and Geth, they should be working fine uh, for the, for like the DevNet. Gotcha, okay, thank you. Any other discussion points for DevNet 3? Great. Thank you, Muffy. Thank you, everyone. Um, large block spam test. We have a status update here. Maybe Georgios. Or maybe Georgios is not here. Uh, does anybody have any visibility on this? I know um, we're, they're going to be running another wave of tests with the additional monitoring up, but I do not know the status of that. Okay, well, we can circle back outside of this call and see how the monitoring worked here. Um, I guess to contextualize the bandwidth reduction proposals, whether it be episode, whether it be some uh, a different push pull strategy. I guess these types of tests and simulations will hopefully help us help inform us as to um, whether we want to add additional complexity by following one of these bandwidth reduction proposals. Okay, pre compiled benchmarking. Kev, are you still here? I saw that you maybe had to drop out. Uh, hello. Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, yeah, I wrote in the chat uh never mind gave uh, some numbers last week uh for 52k so it's uh a lot closer to the original estimates um and yeah nim and the uh, java client uh, i think we're still waiting for estimates from them okay but we're increasingly honing in on that 50 to 60k number and nothing nothing unexpected on those benches have shown up after we right. resolve the negative case. Right, right. It seems that we just need to optimize the Go KZG client a bit more. Okay, because that's like 67. Uh, in the best case, it's uh, six, 67. But okay, the worst gotcha. case, it was going to more than 100. This is a garbage collection. Yeah, it was just doing a lot of allocations. Yeah, okay. And what's the average? For Go KZG? Yeah. Um, I can't remember what Martin said. And this is uh, with uh, which library? Um, that's Killage. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't remember what the default one it was using. It might be Killage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. uh, but with Gnark, it would be lower. Yeah, with Gnark, I think the the worst case was better than GoKZG's best case. Um, so there's like a big difference. And help me understand, are the allocations, are there lots of allocations in one call and thus the garbage collection can be kicked in? Or is it because of the benchmarking and repeated calls that kind of ends up being an allocation blow up that hurts some of these calls? Um, it seemed like it was in one call. Okay. Okay, but I guess other libraries coming in at the numbers that we expect is a signal to fix the library that doesn't rather than to tune to that library. Uh, but we right. can continue this in January. Thank you. Uh, anything else on pre-compiled benches? Excellent. Um, the last link that Tim had in here was just linking out to the um, readiness checklist. I don't have particular items on here. It looks like you know testing is certainly um, 
pretty important thing with respect to Hive transaction pool, especially on the execution layer. Um, any updates on testing, just in general? Hello. Hey. Test. Okay, so I did update the notes with the progress of Hive testing. So there are some good PRs from uh, Mario, and I put up some PRs. What we did is we added support for Go workspaces in Hive. So now we can deduplicate the testnet related code uh, of these Hive simulators, meaning that the, the testnet that basically runs in these simulators that spawns these clients, uh, we can reuse for for it for four and for other like uh, future EIPs. Now, um, aside from the workspaces and the code to duplication, we've also been working on some extra features like metric support in Hive. Uh, my hope is that eventually we'll have some benchmarking in Hive where we can automate metrics, uh, which might be really useful for the blobs benchmarking. And uh, I believe Mario is working on uh, the withdrawals testing. And with that in place, I think we can basically, on top of that, also implement for it for four testing. But there's this, this sequentiality here where if right. we're going to test the the engine API of like posts are high, then we we might depend on the the uh, testing. Got it. Okay, any questions for Proto or any uh, further comments on testing? Okay. Um, anything else on the readiness checklist? I'm going to do a pass on this. For example, the setting the min gas price is still in there, but that PR is closed. It's a few things like that. But hey, Danny, can I circle back to testing real quick with a quick question? Yes, do we have an ETA on updated retest ETH um, cases? I'm specifically working on the KZG precompile contract. And I was wondering if anybody had, or if there were plans to start working on um, ref tests for that. Same same question basically extends to all the different types of functionality we need to add. Yeah, I can circle back on this outside of the call. I'm, I know the intention is there. I do not know um, if it's at the immediate top of anybody's list. Marius, do you have any visibility on that? If you're speaking, we cannot hear you. Um, I'm going to make a note on that okay. and follow up. No problem. Thank you. OK. Um, anything else on the readiness checklist? really any other items we want to discuss today. Excellent. We'll close. Thank you, everyone. Happy holidays. We will reconvene this call, I believe, the first week of January. Yeah, that. January 3rd, and Tim will again be leading the call. Oh, yes. Thank you for writing notes. <laughs> okay, cool. Happy holidays, everyone. Talk to you soon. Take care. Uh, happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays.